Before applying any fabric, it is necessary to precondition the foam with a hot coat of resin. Since the foam can absorb resin, it is best to apply a heavy coat initially to fill the surface and to wet out any dust particles. Be sure the entire surface is covered before proceeding to apply any fabric. The tacky surface of the hot coat will help hold the fabric in place. Stretch the fabric across the entire surface to eliminate any wrinkles. Gentle pressure is all that is needed to get it to stick. Make sure the upper edge is stretched uniformly along the top contour. Brush on resin until the fabric is fully saturated. The fabric color will change from white to clear as the resin soaks in. Continue applying resin until all the cloth has been covered. Watch for small air bubbles which may develop within the weave of the fabric. These usually require more resin to remove. Hot coat the license plate hole, working resin into all the corners. Inlay the pre-cut fiberglass and begin applying the resin to saturate it. Do not put fiberglass on the offset lip at this time. It will be reinforced later. Finish the wet out of the license plate area and then use any remaining resin to begin coating the trunk. Finish pre-coating the remaining foam in preparation for the first coat of 10 ounce fiberglass over the trunk. I've selected a 38 inch fabric width which just overlaps the sides. This reduces waste and eases application. Be sure to straighten the fabric once again to remove wrinkles. Wet out on the flat surfaces is straightforward. Just keep a keen eye out for air bubbles. However, corners can be a little tougher. I first wet out the fabric and try to stretch it as much as possible. When the resin reaches this semi-firm stage, you can use a carpenter's knife, and I've already started this cut, to trim away the excess material. You have to do it when it's firm enough that you're not lifting the resin off of the foam, but yet you can't wait until it is so firm that it can't be cut. I'm sanding the edge of the overlapping fabric so a ridge does not develop in this area as I add more layers. I applied a light coat of resin over the side of the vehicle and I'm now fitting the second layer of 10 ounce cloth. This is wet out in the conventional manner shown before. I'm now applying a layer of 6 ounce fabric directly over the 10 ounce layer. Since the 10 ounce fabric is still wet, I am able to use a squeegee to work some of the excess resin up into the 6 ounce material. Both sides are fully reinforced, but the trunk needs two more layers to complete the schedule. At this stage, the outside of the form has been thoroughly covered in three layers of fiberglass. It is time to begin modifying the part and reinforcing the inside as well. I've marked off the trunk lid just using measurements and a template and some things again out of a magazine to get the right proportions. I marked it off with a marker and made sure it was all squared up. I'm going to use a die grinder and fit it with a cut off wheel. to just nip through the fiberglass itself, not go all the way through the foam. That's, not, that's why I'm not using a jigsaw or anything else. Because then I'm going to cut the foam smaller on the inside and actually leave a lip within the trunk like a modern car has. So it can be watertight. So I'm just using this just enough to cut through the fiberglass itself. Heavy pressure can make the wheel jump offline, so begin lightly and cut straight. Take your time cutting openings in the fiberglass skin. Gouges in the foam can be fixed, but it is extremely difficult to replace miscut fiberglass in areas like trunks and door openings. All right, I've made the cut all the way around with the cutoff wheel. I've now removed 
the roadster back from, a, from the chassis because I'm going to need access to the inside of the trunk. I'm actually going to cut the lid, but what I'm trying to leave behind on the inside of the foam is a lip. And you'll see that in the finished product. This is a perfect look of the inside of the trunk flipped upside down. I've marked out the trunk lid size one inch smaller on the inside than it was on the outside. I'm now going to take a razor knife, follow this straight edge, and make a cut through until the blade hits the fiberglass on the outside. I'll do that in all dimensions. We're actually trying to run a knife directly underneath the fiberglass to separate it from the foam. So it will leave urethane on the inside that we can file down to make a weather strip lip. Not everybody has to do this if you're making this part. It was one way we felt we could do that and make it a little a little more like a production part. So we're giving it a try. It seems to be working okay so far. For this to work well, try to make the cut very shallow so the remaining foam is not hurt. However, if the foam is damaged, it can be replaced with new pieces. Left with a trunk lid that we can reinforce. I need to take off all this urethane here and fix some of the urethane, urethane around the edges. But what we'll do is we'll reinforce over them and we'll actually make a catch drip rail. It'll uh, help waterproof the trunk.